Greetings. Greetings and welcome to Heal Talk with Lisa. It's so good to be with you, isn't it? Thank you for joining me with an open mind and an open heart. You know, I believe we all have challenges and we also have the answers within us. It's been an incredible weekend, actually a whole week, hasn't it? Well, thank you, Patricia, for joining in. I'm going to just take a few moments and allow this wonderful uh, sound of the singing bowls to send us into that state of love and connectiveness. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, just send... Uh, if you can hear me, uh, just say something. Uh, I'm looking over here and I just wanted to know if I am live. There you go. I think that's a yes. <laughs> Hi, Tracy. Thank you for joining in. Well, today is going to be awesome. I'm going to be talking about habits, how we form habits, and what the 33 day is and how we change habits in 33 days. Thank you, Patricia. Okay. Well, hopefully we are all coming to a point of calmness and may this session of um, Heal Talk for the next half an hour, 20 minutes be beneficial to you. As I am talking to you, if there is any thoughts and ideas, any questions you have, please let me know. Last week we talked about how our mind is formed, about our conscious mind and subconscious, and then I got an email. I got an email a few days ago saying, Lisa, if I get hypnotized, am I asleep? Or do I hear what you say? Let me say this. When we are in hypnosis, we are more aware than when we are in our regular conscious world being busy with all the stressors and everything else that is happening around us. We are so consumed with all the information that when we go into hypnosis, we go into that state of pure conscious and delve into the subconscious where we have more awareness and connectiveness to our surroundings and within us. Did you know that I can hypnotize you right here, right now? That's right. As you are sitting, listening to me, would you like to know how hypnosis is and how awareness is? Just in three minutes? Of course, everything about me is about threes, right? So, just say yes or thumbs up so I know I am connected with you and you would like to know how you can have full awareness and yet hypnosis. Anybody? Thumbs up? Okay. Thank you. I hear you. Okay, good. Thank you. So... As you are sitting, I hope you are sitting, make sure that you are in a place that you are grounded. So you can be either sitting or standing. Now, take a nice deep breath. And as you exhale, very gently, even either you want, you can close your eyes or even with your eyes open. I want you to think about your home the house you live in. Did you get that? Do you have that? Can you visualize your home? Okay. Once you have that, I want you to also visualize the keys to the door that opens your house, your condo, your home, apartment, whatever it is. And do you know where the keys are? 
if you were to wiggle those keys, either in your purse, in your pocket, or on your desk, do you know the sound of the keys? Can you hear it in your own mind? Okay? Now, you also know which key opens the door to your house, correct? I want you to take that one key, even without taking it out, visualize in your own mind that you pick that one key and you put the key into the door and unlock the door. Walk inside the house while you're sitting right here listening to me, visualizing you're walking into your home and close the door behind you. Got it so far? Okay. Now, once you have the door closed, if you are wearing shoes in your own mind's eye, take your shoes off and allow your feet to touch the ground. Become aware of the material that is on the floor. I don't know if you have wood, if it is marble, if it is concrete, if it is carpeted. But without moving in your own mind's eye, I want you to get a feel, a sensation of what that flooring is beneath your feet with no socks or shoes. And look around in your own mind's eye, even without being there, or even if you are sitting in the house, everything that is placed in that room that you are seeing. It could be your living room, it could be the hall, it could be the dining room, whatever it is that it's in your own mind, the first thing you do when you enter into your house. And all the pictures and all the furniture. And as you take a nice deep breath, close your eyes for just a moment and envision all the sounds inside that home. Even the scent that is so familiar to you. And where all the rooms are located. And at that very moment, visualize in your own mind, going and finding that perfect spot that you would like to sit and relax. No matter where you are, that place is that place of safe, safety and security for you. That's the place you like to lounge and as if going into your cave mode, into your safety mode, and say, Calgon, take me away. And for a few moments, you are relaxing. That place has been in your mind. That place is what happened at this very moment. It's called the conscious self-hypnosis. Because at that, at that very moment, nothing was real except in your mind. So now you understand the magic of tapping within yourself. And that is how I help you tap deeper within yourself to make changes happen. Hi, Thelma. Hello, Sosi. Change happens when we choose to make that change. That's why I say you make the decision and I help you be the change you wish. So, today is about making change and changing habits. Habits are formed when we do something over and over, over and over, until we get so good at it that we don't think about it. And it becomes a part of our automatic way of behavior. Now, there's good habits, there's bad habits. What are the good habits? But first of all, before I say there is a good one and a bad one, which I call my ings, and I'll explain to you what the ings are, I want you to let, to let you know that every habit that we form, either knowingly or unknowingly, when we copy someone 
and we see someone we like or mentor or someone we look up to and we pick their habits and we start doing that because we like to mimic or feel like them or we pick up habits uh, like smoking, overeating, gambling, I call them all those things, cheating, drinking, um, exercising, playing, gaming, all those things, the good, the bad, doesn't matter because they all are there for you. They help you feel good. Even the smokers, when they are smoking, while they're smoking, they truly believe, oh, I'm relaxing. I'm taking time off to relax. When we go and exercise, we take time to exercise. It's good for us. Uh, calming, it's good for us. No matter what habit we have formed, we have done it because in one form or another, in one shape or another, it's truly helping us take time for ourselves. So, when we do something over and over, every day, in every way, we repeat that, it becomes a form of habit. Now, if we continue that habit over and over to a point that when I ask some people, how long have you been doing this or this habit that you want to change? They say, as long as I remember. Well, it's impossible. You were not born as a smoker. You were not born as a gambler. You were not born as an overeater. So we are not born with our habits. We pick up habits and some of them are crutches and some of them are there to help us achieve something better, like exercising. And that's the difference. Both are good. And when we continue doing it, it becomes a part of our behavior. So, that's why it's shifting the behavior. And in order to shift the behavior, I work with you or anyone who comes for hypnotherapy to first believe in themselves, believe that they can make that change, believe that they have the power to make that change and believe in themselves. Once we believe in our own power that because we made that change, we picked up a habit, we can change a habit. Because we did something, we can undo something. Because our mind is like that computer. So if you know how to operate a computer, going into the subconscious mind is like opening that file, right? And you type in there, whatever habit it is that we have, uh, overeating, smoking, uh, gambling, uh, whatever it is. And we go in there, we pull that file, and we go through the file, we find that one aspect. And in hypnosis, because you are more aware, just like walking into your safe place on that couch, without being there, you felt that you were there, I allow you to be fully aware of that moment. And as you tap inside, you open that file and you go to that point of when you picked up that behavior. Sometimes it, the why does not matter as much as when you are ready. So the change happens upon our readiness. We pull that file make the addition, make the change, and then refile it with a new name, just like filing it in the computer. And then we place it inside our computer file and the old one goes into the archives. Nothing about our behavior, nothing about our being changes. We're still the same. 
We're still that loving individual. You can even become more loving. Hello, Yolanda. Hello, Laura. Hi, Sylvia. So I've been talking about change and how we make changes. Now, why do I call 33 days? If you know me, you know so much about me, which is I'm all about the number three in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Me, myself, and I. Mind, body, emotion. Oh, this was three times three, nine, highest number of spirituality, right? Giving birth, all about nine. So 33 days. Now, here it is. Ready? Hello, darling. Ready for the magic of 33? We as human beings move in the direction of our most dominant thought pattern. We are conditioned without you noticing, knowing we're all about timeline. Everything is numbers. Everything is time-based. We talk about few moments. I say, I'll be back in a in few moments. I'll see you in an hour. What time is good for you? When is the next moment or the next hour? When is the next day, next month, next week? Our goals that we set for a year, everything is time-based. Even our birthing is nine months, which is another time-based. So with all the history and everything about us time, we move in the direction of success, building, goal setting, and time. Right? Powerful number, Laura. So, some people say we change habits in 21 days. Great. Some say 28 days. Some say 30 days. Why did I create 33 days? As a matter of fact, I'll give you a secret. If you know who Jack Canfield is, the author of Mega Chicken Soup for the Souls, he published 52 languages and 52 books of different kinds of chicken soups. Jack Canfield, I met him at one of uh, I, the high number uh, Brandon Bruchard's event and I, he spoke and he was talking about habits that form in 28 days and when we met later I said Mr. Canfield may I have a moment I have a theory about change of habits and it's about 33 days and he says why 33 and that's why I'm sharing it with you but this is only my theory because what is the longest days in a month? Come on, anybody. In one month, what is the longest number in a month? It's 31 days, correct? So because we build on success, 31 days, if we do something over and over, over and over, if we want to make a change in a habit, let's say walking, doing a power walk, 6.30 in the morning, doing a power hour at 6.30 in the morning, you do that for 33 days. Here's why it becomes embedded in you versus if you were to do it 28 days or 30 days. Because a part of our subconscious, which is the most accurate time, alarm system, and the power, it knows there's 31 days in a month, or generally 33 days. If you were to do it for 28 days, the subconscious mind turns around and says, okay, I did it for 28 days. What am I going to do for the other two days? Boom. There might, only it might, be that it self-sabotages you and if you do not complete the month fully and completely 
it goes, no, 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 no. Okay, something is off. And then you continue doing the same thing again next month for 22 days, 21 days, 28 days, 30 days. And on the 31st day, the subconscious mind goes, wait a minute, we're not complete. So, 31 days is a month. Now, why do I make it 33? Because if you were to do extra two days of the same thing over and over, over and over, and you come to a complete 33 days of doing the same thing, you're already two days into the next month. And the next month, maybe 29 days or 28 days. And because you've already done two days into the next month, you're already a success. So if you can be a success for 33 days, do you not believe you can maintain being success for the next 28 days? Of course you are. Woohoo! Right? Of course you are. We build on success. So tomorrow... Today, do something, starting today, building on your own success. Do something and complete 33 days and watch, no matter what it is, you become in control of your mindset. You reset whatever it is that was a habit that you want to make the change today and be the power of influencing yourself to be the success that you wish to be. And of course, at all times, I am here for you. Of course, you can read more of that in my book. I have this book that I publish. It's called Heal Thy Mind Body. You can find my book on the shop in my website. There's so many techniques that I have that ha can help you with different aspects. From meditating, from empowering, from making a change about your eating. November 17 being the American, the great American smokeout. And... I've got testimonials. Look at my testimonials, not only on my website, but on YouTube. Thank you, Laura. You can make the change. And if you are not doing the change and you need just a little bit more help, I'm here for you. I'm going to do something. So I'm going to show you one thing that I want you to know that you can do this on your own and realize how much we take for granted. See this glass of water? Okay. Tell me, is this glass half empty or is this half full? Come on. Is this glass half empty or is this glass half full? Hello, Zolita. Thank you for joining. It is half full. Some people say half full. Some will say half empty. That's right, Sylvia. Half full or half empty? Both. Here's the secret. It's neither. It's refillable. It's always refillable. Cheers to you. May a new concept in life, may this new concept of your glass is always refillable. Help you in every path that you walk upon. 
I know. The reason I brought that up, because life is about perception. Habits are formed not because it's a bad thing. Our habits have helped us, guided us, been a part of our crutch. We hold on to things in life because for whatever reason, it's been good. Until the time it's no longer beneficial for you. If it's affecting your health, if it is affecting your relationships, if it's affecting you, that you feel guilty, that you feel shame, that it's not empowering you anymore, it's time to make a change. I've made changes in my life, and that is why I love what I do. Because I know you matter. I don't know why I'm getting emotional. It must be the full moon. It's not who the leader is. It's how we feel. What hurts us. What's good for us. And what's loving. But most and, most and foremost, it's about us being loving to ourselves. And say, I matter. It's, it's like, dear God, although we all look different, we're all the same. We're one. We're all one. Good, bad, right, wrong, man, woman, we're all spirits. And may this spirit that embodies you travel and touch upon someone else's heart and this is one of the things that I say to all my clients the next time you do a pledge of allegiance say it recite it this way I pledge allegiance to accept and appreciate myself fully and completely because I matter. Thank you for being the miracle that you are. Thank you for all the hearts. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you for all of you that is a part of my life. And until next session of Heal Talk with Lisa, be the miracle and join me next week. Evoke what was, embrace what is, and may you evolve to all your heart's desire. Find me at Heal Within. Dot com. Keep the glass refueled.